Are you ready? Let's get started. So we're going to start with examples. Have a look at the picture first. Let me ask you a question. How many people are there? You have three uh, friends, three classmates. Where are they? Where are they? They are in a library. They are preparing for exams. They are doing homework. Okay, we have two girls and one boy. Now let's read the, uh, the dialogue. Okay. I suggest spending some time in Agadir this summer. I suggest spending some time in Agadir this summer. Sorry, I can't. I plan to search for a part-time job this summer. Sorry, I can't. I plan to search for a part-time job this summer. The girl answer, that's a good idea. I agree to go with you, sir. That's a good idea. I agree to go with you, sir. First, let me ask you a question. Where do the friends want to spend their holiday? Right, they want to spend their holiday in Agadir. Okay, now let's go to uh, our target structure. Can you find the gerund in these three exchanges? Right. It is spending. Look at the ing form. I suggest spending. Do we have another gerund here? No, we don't have. Now what about the infinitive? Okay. Very good. To search, because we have two. To search, I plan to search. Do we have another infinitive in these exchanges? Yeah. We have to go. To go. Right. When do we use gerund? When do we use uh, infinitive? This is the main focus of our lesson today. Good. Okay, let's start with the gerund. So the gerund takes the place of a subject. As you know, the English word order in, a, in, in, in sentences follows these patterns. Subject, verb, object. That's the word order of English sentences. Subject, verb, object. SVO. So the gerund takes the place of subject sometimes. So playing tennis is a cool hobby. Playing tennis is a subject. It contains gerund. Is is a verb. A cool hobby is an object. Playing tennis is a cool hobby. Example B. Traveling by car is better than traveling by coach. Traveling by car is better than traveling by coach. Traveling by car is a subject, is verb, better than traveling by coach, complements, it is uh, an object. Traveling by car is the subject. So the gerund takes the place of subject, that is the, the first position of the English sentence. Subject, verb, object, that's the word order of the English sentence. SVO. So the gerund takes place of the subject. Let's go on. The gerund takes the place of the object this time. It can be used as an object. Example A. Games are time consuming. Where is the gerund? Time consuming. It comes in the position of the object. Games subject are verb to be time consuming object. Another example, he likes going to school. He likes going to school. He is the subject, likes is the verb, going to school is the object. The gerund, going, verb in gerund form, going, go, going. Example C, I love reading, I love reading. I is the subject, love is the verb, reading is the object. So. We conclude that the gerund takes the place of an object. Great. 
Now let's move to uh, other examples. Gerund can be used after prepositions. Prepositions. What are prepositions? You studied pre prepositions before. They are in, at, on, for, next, after, before, etc. Phrasal verbs. Phrasal verb is a verb followed by a particle on, at, uh, for, etc. For example, search for, give up, turn down, etc. So, gerund can be used after prepositions or phrasal verbs. Example A. Karima is not very good at speaking in public. Karima is not very good at speaking in public. Where is the gerund? Speaking. Very good. Why it is in gerund? Because it comes right after preposition at. Because we have the preposition at. So the verb should be in gerund form. B. She looked unhappy after seeing her time schedule. She looked unhappy after seeing her time schedule or her timetable. Where is the gerund in this sentence? Seeing. Why it is in gerund form? Ah, it comes up because we have the preposition after. Very good. Now let's move to C. He gave up smoking when he read about its dangers. He gave up smoking when he read about its dangers. Where is the gerund form? Smoking. Why it is in gerund form? Because we have phrasal verb gave up. The, the verb to give up, to stop doing something, to quit. So, give up is a phrasal verb. When it is followed by another verb, the verb should be in gerund form. Very good. D, we must put off going on our holiday this year. We must put off. Put off means postpone. Going on our holiday this year. Okay, where is the gerund form? Going. Why it is in gerund? Because, because it's followed by, because it comes right after the phrasal verb put off. Put off, it means to postpone. So as a conclusion, we can use gerund after prepositions, in, on, at, before, after, etc. And after phrasal verbs, look after, give up, ask in, ask out, etc. Okay, are you taking some notes? I hope so. Now, let's continue with some examples, with our examples. Gerund can be used after some expressions. For example, expressions like can't help, can't stand, to be worth, it's no use, and look forward to. Okay. A. She couldn't help eating sandwiches. She couldn't stop eating sand sandwiches. She, she loves sandwiches very much. Where is the gerund form? We have eaten. Right, we have eaten. It is in gerund form because it comes right after couldn't help. It is an expression. Some English novels are worth reading. Where is the gerund form? Good, reading. Why? Because the, the gerund comes right after are worth, to be plus worth. It is an expression. So as a conclusion, we can say that gerund comes after some expressions like can't help, can't stand, to be worth, it's no use, there is no use in, look forward to, etc. Okay. Also, we use gerund after some verbs. You can read, admit, avoid, dislike, consider, enjoy, finish, regret. Now, let's read the examples. He admitted having wasted time. He admitted having wasted time. Young people who avoid smoking, young people who avoid smoking, stay healthy. I dislike eating heavy meals at night. After a series of bad marks, Karim considers making a change. Most young people enjoy playing football. Yasmina has finished doing her homework. Sarah regrets having shouted at her mother. So, after these verbs, if, if these verbs are followed by another verb, if these verbs are followed by another verb, the verb must be in ing form. 
Okay, like I dislike eating. We can't say I dislike eat. I dislike eating. The ing form. You can take a shot of this uh, screen, or you can note down uh, some ideas, especially these verbs. Now we have. We are going to to see a full list of verbs that can be followed by gerund. We have admit, advise, allow, anticipate, appreciate, avoid, begin, can't bear, can't help, can't see, can't stand, complete, consider, continue, defend, delay, deny, despise, discuss, dislike, don't mind, dread, encourage, enjoy, finish, forget, hate, imagine, Involve, keep, like, love, mention, mind, need, neglect, permit, postpone, practice, prefer, propose, quit. And we have recall, recollect, recommend, report, require, resist, risk, start, stop, suggest, tolerate, try, understand, and urge. So these verbs can be followed by germ. Now let's move to B, infinitive. Let's talk about infinitive. We use infinitive after these verbs. I will look at these verbs. We have agree, ask, consent, expect, manage, want, and promise. Let's see an example. Sophia agreed to go with us. Where is the infinitive? It is to go. Why it is infinitive? It is because it comes right after the verb agree. Agreed to go. Second example, Sara asks her friends to travel to Agadir. When we have the verb ask, it must be followed by an infinitive. Finally, he consented to lend me his car. Mm, he's so generous. So he consented to lend me his car, to give me his car for a short while. Consented must be followed by infinitive. So these verbs in general takes the infinitive. Also, we use adjective plus infinitive form. We have an example. It is difficult to answer these exam questions. The adjective difficult is followed by to answer. The verb is in infinitive. When we have an adjective plus verb, the verb should be in infinitive. It's difficult to answer. It's too expensive to buy a sports car. It's very expensive to buy a sports car. It's hard, adjective hard, to, to reach the top of the mountain. So hard to reach. To reach is infinitive. Here is a list of verbs followed by infinitive. So, so agree, aim, appear, arrange, ask, attempt, to be able, beg, begin, care, choose, con condescend, consent, continue, dare, decide, deserve, detest, dislike, expect, fail, forget, get, happen, have, hesitate, hope, hurry, intend, leap, leave, like, long, love, mean, neglect, offer, ought, plan, prefer, prepare, proceed, promise, promise, propose, refuse, remember, say, shoot, Start, stop, strive, swear, threaten, try, use, wait, want, and wish. So these verbs must be followed by an infinitive. We have an example. She agreed to speak before the game. She agreed. The athlete agreed to speak. Agreed to speak before game. So we have the verb agree is followed. If it is followed by another verb, this verb, this second verb should be in infinitive form. You can take a shot of this uh, screen, okay? Or you can note down these verbs. Okay, let's proceed. Now let's move to C. By the way, we use either the gerund or infinitive after these verbs. Some verbs you can use both. Infinitive or gerund. So we have the verbs like begin, start, like, hate, love, prefer, stop, and some other verbs. We have an example. Tom began writing. In infinitive, Tom began to write. You have an option. They started dancing. They started to dance. He likes playing tennis. He likes to play tennis. 
Andrew hates cooking. Andrew hates to cook. I love reading. I love to read. She prefers reading to writing. He prefers to read rather than write. Kareem stopped talking to his friend. Kareem stopped to talk to his friend. Now pay attention to this example. We can have a look at this example. Kareem stopped talking to his friend. The gerund after stop. Kareem stopped to talk to his friend. So know that certain verbs can either take the ing form or infinitive with two, with this difference in meaning. Here we have a difference, huge difference in meaning. So Kareem stopped talking to his friend. So maybe he, he, had, he had some problems with his friends, so he decided to stop talking to him uh, at once. But Karim stopped to talk to his friends. Maybe he was doing something and stopped to start talking to him. So there is a huge difference when using the uh, difference in meaning when using the gerund and infinitive uh, with these verbs. Okay. So in the final uh, here, in the final exercise, we are going to, to have a look at bare infinitive. Bare infinitive is a uh, verb without two, in contrast to a full infinitive. Full infinitive is two plus verb. Bare infinitive is verb without two. Here, in, for example, use the, 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 the bare infinitive after models like can, could, shall, should, will, would, may, might, and must, etc. We have an example. You should practice sport every week. You should practice sport every week or every uh, two days. You should practice. Practice is in bare infinitive without to. We can't say you should to practice. No, it's false. Or you should practice in. No, it's false. You should say you should practice sport every week. After some verbs like recommend, let and help, she let him go. She let him go, not she let him to go. It's false, she let him go, bare infinity, without two. After some expressions like, let us, you'd better, I'd rather. For example, you'd better rely on yourself. You'd better rely on yourself. Now, let's see some exercises. Put the following verbs in brackets in the infinitive gerund or bare infinitive. How many sentences do we have? We have five sentences. Look at the verbs in brackets. See, revise, search, fix, and do. You can put the verbs into infinitive, gerund, or bare infinitive without two. Now, let's study number one. I'm looking forward to... I'm looking forward to... What's your answer? You in Mertil soon. I'm looking forward to. We have six sentences. I'm looking forward to seeing. All right, seeing because we have the expression look forward to. So whenever we have this expression, we must use the verb in ing form. You should your lessons as soon as possible. Very good. We have bare infinitive, revise, without two, because we have the modal verb should. Number three, I want for a part-time job this summer. I want to search, because want requires, second verb is in infinitive form, to search. Good. It's no use this rusty machine. I'd rather a new one. Okay? It's no use fixing this rusty machine. We have the ing form because we have the expression it's no use. It's no use fixing this, this rusty machine. I'd rather, we have another expression here, I'd rather, 
which takes the gerund. I'd rather it takes sorry it takes the bare infinitive. I'd rather buy a new one. So fixing is a gerund form because we have the expression. It's no use. But I'd rather takes bare infinitive, right? In number five. Young people are bored with the same thing all the time. Young people are bored, feel bored with, we have, what do you notice? We have with, with is a preposition. What happens to the verb if it is, uh, if it comes right after the preposition, it becomes in the gerund. So doing the same thing all the time. In number six, she likes Sport every Sunday. So likes is a verb which can take both. You can choose either infinitive or gerund here. You can, she likes practicing sport every Sunday. Or she likes to practice sport every Sunday. Okay, let's move to another exercise, uh, which is uh, here, the following. You can choose either the gerund or infinitive. I 